All right, good afternoon and morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Navigating OVC's Resources, a Compass to OVC's Funding and Training Opportunities. My name is Claudia Zaborski, and I'll be the producer for today's webinar, and we're certainly glad you could join us. Today, we will provide a background on OVC, the different funding opportunities OVC offers, and where to go to find resources. During the webinar, our presenters will demonstrate how to navigate to several of these resources. We encourage you to follow along on your computer. Before we start, though, let's review how to address technical issues should they arise. If you're listening via computer, please select the speakers or headphones you wish to use. Your microphone and video are not needed and will remain off. You will not be able to start video or unmute yourself. If you're experiencing any technical issues with this webinar, please let us know via the chat box or email our technical specialist, Bess Hoskins, at bhoskins at ovctac.org. Um, and we will definitely be checking the text chat box for any technical issues. So please feel free. If today you can't hear or you have uh, challenges, let us know via the chat box. We will also be using a Q&A pod today for questions. Um, so if you have any questions throughout today's webinar, please opt to use the Q&A pod, which you can find at the top of your screen. Also. Um, Please remember that when typing in the chat box, the default setting is to message everyone. If you need to send a message privately, select the drop down and choose one of the hosts. Now, um, I would love to turn it over to Shelby Jones Crawford, our program manager at OVC. Shelby? Hello, everyone. We are so pleased that you're joining us today. And now, it is my great honor to introduce Christina Rose, who is the Director of the Office for Victims of Crime, or OVC. Ms. Rose's resume is quite extensive, and she has been doing victim services work for many, many years, but I'll give you just a few highlights. Appointed by President Biden as Director of the Office for Victims of Crime, Christina Rose oversees over $9 billion in grant funding to support crime victims and survivors. Just prior to her appointment, Ms. Rose led the victim care and support effort at the Department of Defense Independent Review Commission on Sexual Assault in the Military. Ms. Rose has amassed over 20 years in DOJ roles, including as OVC's Deputy Director, the National Institute of Justice's Acting Director and Deputy Director, and the Office on Violence Against Women's Chief of Staff. In 2016, she was detailed to the office of then Vice President Joe Biden as a Senior Policy Advisor on Violence Against Women. She was a victim advocate in Washington DC US Attorney's Office in 2013. In the nonprofit sector, Ms. Rose was the Director of Strategic Partnerships for Healing Justice and Executive Director for End Violence Against Women International. Ms. Rose holds an MS in Criminal Justice from Northeastern University and a BA in Sociology from George Mason University. Ladies and gentlemen, Director Christina Rose. Thank you so much, Shelby, for that very nice introduction. I do appreciate it. Uh, gracias, uh, OVC TTAC, por apoyar este seminario web. Gracias por unirse a nosotros hoy. Thanks to OVC TTAC for supporting this webinar, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We're holding this webinar because we want more people across the country in states, territories, and tribal nations to take full advantage of the tools and the resources that OVC has to offer to those serving victims of crime. 
And for the first time, OVC is holding this webinar in both English and Spanish. Our mission at OVC is to enhance the nation's capacity to assist crime victims and to provide leadership in changing attitudes, policies, and practices to promote justice and healing for all victims of crime. To achieve this mission, we need the people who serve victims to have the funds, the training, and the tools that allow them to best serve crime victims. For more than 40 years, OVC has been funding cutting edge victim service programs with the goal of ensuring that all victims have access to the services that they need to heal in the aftermath of crime. OVC offers a wide range of resources for victim service providers, and we're hoping that this webinar will make it easier for you to find and access those resources. Today, we'll be highlighting the various funding opportunities, training, and technical assistance available to organizations assisting survivors. Our funding has supported millions of individuals across the country each year who have experienced crimes like elder abuse and fraud, sexual assault, labor trafficking, child abuse, hate crimes, and many other types of victimization. You'll learn about intensive customized training for your staff, on-demand training through virtual options, and do-it-yourself toolkits to help your community prepare for incidents of mass violence or to address vicarious trauma. We hope that you'll join the OVC community after this webinar by following us on social media. We offer several channels for you to learn about new tools and funding, including my monthly telebriefing called From the Director's Desk, which takes place on the second Thursday of every month. As you know, access, options, and information are key aspects of ensuring that crime victims and survivors feel seen and heard. But I think this applies to victim service providers too because when all of you are able to easily access a wide variety of tools and information, you're in a much better position to meet the needs of the victims that you serve. So we have a wonderful group of presenters lined up for you, and they're gonna make sure that you leave this webinar with the knowledge and the skills to find and use all that OVC has to offer. Victim service providers are the backbone of our field and we so appreciate the work that all of you do every day to build resilience and ensure healing options for victims, survivors, and their families. Now, I'm gonna hand it over to Claudia Zaborski to get us started with our program today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director Rose, for those very um, kind words. And we are going to jump right into our session for today. So it is my pleasure to introduce our presenters, Jessica Andrew, Stacey Phillips, and Jenny Stancil from uh, OVC. And so I'm going to hand it over to them. Thank you so much, folks. Stacey, you can go ahead and introduce yourself if you like. Oh, I'm sorry. I was having some technical difficulties. I apologize. No worries. Hi, everyone. My name is Stacey Phillips, and I'm a program manager with the Office for Victims of Crime, and I'm happy to be here. Next slide, please. So we're going to talk about um, some learning object objectives. We're going to talk about what is our role um, in providing support services to victims of crime, how you can locate those opportunities for your organization. We're gonna talk about some training and technical assistance opportunities, and then also tell you how you can search for our OVC resources by topic. Next slide, please. So we're gonna do an overview of the Office for Victims of Crime, but first, um, Bess, can we pull up our first poll? We'd like to see how familiar um, our guests are with our resources. So take a minute if you wouldn't mind and uh, let us know. And while we're waiting for those results, why don't we go ahead and go to the next slide. 
So what are our results? So it looks like most of you are somewhat familiar, a little bit of a tie between very familiar and heard of, but not very familiar. And um, those of you that have never heard of us, we're so excited that all of you are here, but especially, especially you guys. So thank you so much for taking the time to do that. So the Victims of Crime Act of 1984, which is we refer to as BOCA, um, established the Crime Victims Fund and the Office for Victims of Crime um, as the administrator of the fund. So OBC is one of six components within the Office of Justice Programs in the US Department of Justice. As administrator of the Crime Victims Fund, OBC supports many programs and services that help victims immediately following a crime, and then we continue to support them as they rebuild their lives. Billions of dollars are invested annually in victim compensation and assistance in every state and territory, as well as for direct services, training and technical assistance, and other capacity building efforts. Next slide, please. So our OBC channels the money that we have from the Crime Victims Fund towards victim compensation and assistance throughout the United States. We raise awareness about victims' issues, we promote compliance with victims' rights laws, and we also provide training and technical assistance and publications and products to victim assistance professionals. So through OBC, the fund supports programs and services that focus on helping victims in the immediate aftermath of crime and then continue to support them as they rebuild their lives. Millions of dollars are invested annually in victim compensation and assistance in every single US state and territory, as well as for training and technical assistance and other capacity building programs that are designed to enhance service providers, a service provider's ability to support victims of crime in communities across the nation. So through the Crime Victims Fund and other funding streams, OBC supports the communities and programs outlined on this slide. So we would love to hear a little bit more about you. Um, in the chat, can you post what organization you represent? And let's change slides while they're while they're posting who they are with. So we're going to discuss some opportunities from OVC. And Beth, can you pull up the next poll? So we would love for you to tell us if your agency has ever applied for OVC or what we call VOCA funding, um, and let us know. So we want to start by providing an overview of the different types of funding that you may have access to. So please visit our website to access information about all funding streams. And we're going to drop a link in uh, to that information in the chat now. So let's take a look at those answers. So, oh, great. 83% have applied for funding before. That's amazing. And we have so no and unsure. Um, hopefully, by the end of this uh, webinar, we will uh, have introduced other opportunities for you to apply and at least show you how you can do that and access that. So let's look at the next slide, please. So our programs are supported by two categories of funding, formula and discretionary. So what is the difference? So for discretionary grants, Applicants usually apply directly to OBC, and these grants are typically competitive, and the awards are based on predetermined review processes, as well as the availability of funding. For most funding opportunities, we receive more applications than we actually do have funding for, which is understandable because there's such a big demand out there. So we try to fund the strongest proposals based on an objective review criteria. OVC funding opportunities, which we do call solicitations, will be released on a rolling basis for fiscal year 2023. And we're gonna discuss shortly where you can find that information. Our formula funding typically means that there is enacted legislation that specifies how the funds are to be distributed among all eligible applicants. And formula grants are awarded by OVC on a non-competitive basis. The amount of funding um, a specific agency or jurisdiction receives really varies based on a variety of factors, which tend to include population, crime rates, and other considerations. 
Some formula grants like victim assistance and victim compensation are awarded to state or territory administering agencies or what we call SAAs. And they manage the crime victims fund at the state or territorial level. And then they sub award to organizations that provide services to victims in their state. If you don't have an active relationship with your SAA, you really should start one today. If you don't know who your SAA is, we will show you how to find them in a few slides. So let's go to some examples. OVC administers two Victims of Crime Act VOCA formula grant programs that support crime victim compensation and assistance. The cornerstone of support for victims throughout the nation, as well as the largest share of what is used in the Crime Victims Fund. So for our victim compensation formula grants, we provide funding to supplement state compensation programs that provide financial assistance and reimbursement to victims for crime-related out-of-pocket expenses, including medical and dental care, counseling, funeral and burial services, as well as lost wages and income. We also support thousands of victim assistance programs throughout the nation each year, and our states provide sub-grants to local community-based organizations, as well as public agencies that provide services directly to victims. That direct assistance to crime victims includes things like crisis counseling, um, telephone and on-site information and referrals, criminal justice support and advocacy, shelter therapy, and additional assistance. Um, the funds may also be used to develop new programs that address emerging needs, such as gaps in services, as well as training of, of victim service advocates. These funds are also used to support a compassionate, skilled, and effective response to crime victims. Now let's talk about the State Administering Agency or SAA for a second. So the key player in administering VOCA funding for victim assistance and victim compensation is your VOCA State Administering Agency or SAA. VOCA victim assistance awards are made by each state administering agency to other state county and community organizations to support direct services to victims of crime. So SAAs may be housed within a larger state government agency, often related to criminal justice, public safety, health and human services, or they may exist as an independent councils or commissions. To learn more about your SAA, please visit the website page we are putting in the chat now and from this link, you can click on your state and then click on the shaded heading that says State VOCA Funded Victim Assistance and Compensation Programs. And there you can find links to the SAA for Victim Assistance and the SAA for Victim Compensation. And we're gonna show you a screenshot of this in a few slides. So OBC also has an amazing tribal division. We manage different grants to support to provide support to tribal communities to enhance services for victims of crime. And through these programs, OBC currently manages more than 700 awards, totaling over $480 million that support these communities and victims. And you can find out more about these programs by, again, visiting our website, which explores tribal grants and American Indian and Alaska Native resources in more detail. So now I'm going to provide some examples of OVC discretionary grants so that you can get an idea of the sorts of uh, the sort of work that we fund and you can see some examples on this slide. Um, OVC discretionary grants are used in different ways. Sometimes they support national scope demonstration projects and technical and training assistance to enhance the expertise of victim service providers. And these grants can be awarded to states, local units of government, tribal communities, individuals, educational institutions, and private nonprofit organizations. Um, an example of this is the Advancing Hospital-Based Victim Services Program, which reflects the importance of making sure victims can access support in a variety of settings. These funds can be used to identify and implement promising practices and models and programs, and really to address gaps in training and technical assistance for 
the victim services field. An example of this is the expanding sexual assault nurse examiner services program highlighted on the slide. The funds also support direct services such as housing for victims of human trafficking. What we fund changes year to year. So to find out what's going to be funded this year, be sure to check out the DOJ program plan, which we're going to talk about. Are there any questions about funding types? And if so, please post them in the chat. So now I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Jessica Andrews, to talk about program planning. Thanks. Thank you, Stacey. As Stacey said, my name is Jessica Andrew, and I'm currently in the Acting Deputy Director for OVC Tribal Division, um, and I'm honored to be with you today. So to help you find funding opportunities or solicitations that meet the needs of victims and organizations within your community, we recommend that you check out the DOJ Program Plan website that is shown on the screen. And so the DOJ Program Plan website, it is a tool to help you find potential funding opportunities from each of DOJ's grant making components, which are made up of the Office for Community Oriented Policing Services, also known as COPS, um, the Office of Justice Programs, which includes the Office for Victims of Crime, and then there is the Office for Violence Against Women, also known as OBW. And the program plans, they provide a summary detail of the funding opportunities that each DOJ component has or is expected to release in a particular fiscal year. So now we're gonna be able to provide you with an overview of the sort of work that we fund. And so let's navigate that information on resources and funding opportunities together. And our tech technical specialists are going to be posting the links in the chat as we go. And we encourage you all to follow along on your computers while we do this review. So to begin, let us show you how to navigate the OVC program. On the OVC website, you can select Program tab from the drop-down section um, called Program, highlighted in red. And then on this page, you can learn more about the different um, specific programming that OVC supports, from programs that focuses on elder fraud and abuse to those that support communities in the wake of terrorism and mass violence. And so by clicking into each of those topics, you can access a little microsite that offers an in-depth look at each of these um, initiative areas. So next, we're going to be taking a look at where to find um, OVC current funding opportunities within your state and community. To do so, what you're gonna do is select the funding and award tab. And then you're going to select the OVC award list from the drop down menu. Um, and by the way, this does not include SAA or state VOCA sub awards. So the state level VOCA award funded programs, again known as sub awards, can typically be found on the individual state SAA website. And links to those SAA um, individual websites um, were provided earlier and can be found in the OVC directory of, of crime victim services. On the awards list page, the users can then search for the awards via uh, many different search options. So grant type, uh, fiscal year, name of the agency, the state, and also you can search those results in, in different fields. And on this screen, you can see information about some of OVC awards that are currently funded in Texas. And then on the award list page, the users can then search the awards via several different options. Again, you have grant type, fiscal year, name of the agency, state, and more. And so users can also sort these results um, by those same fields. And so in addition to those search screens, the users can also look up original solicitations and to see what awards were made under those specific solicitations as well. So now we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna take a look at where to find OVC funding opportunities, including where to find state funding opportunities through VOCA. Um, this is a section of the site where agencies can see past and future funding opportunities. 
So from the OVC website, you're going to select Funding and Awards tab, and then select Current Funding Opportunities from the dropdown. On this page, you again can search by name, keyword, or keywords, and then sort by the closing date. And many of the OVC solicitations will be posted in the upcoming months or later on. And we will, and later on, we're going to show you how to subscribe to the news of OVC and how you can learn about um, funding opportunities that are coming up. So now we're gonna take a look at where to find state funding opportunities through VOCA. On the programs page, there is a link to find your SAA at the bottom. And you're going to select the box that says state support. On the state support page, you can then use the drop down or click on your state on the map. And this shows your state VOCA funded, um, VOCA, I'm sorry, your state funded victim assistant and compensation program. There you can find the link to the SAA for the victim assistance and the SAA victim compensation. And so on the screen right here, you have where the state support is, where you're able to click. Um, in this particular situation, we're clicking California, which you can then pop up to see what solicitations are currently open. If you're interested in applying for OVC funding, um, watching funding webinars can assist, can assist potential applicants in developing a strong proposal for OVC funding opportunities. Any upcoming webinars are going to be listed here on the website, and you, you can also view a recording of those recently the, the four part pre application webinar series that provides tips on how to get ready for um, the application process. That webinar series is available online right now. And you can locate these webinars on the funding and awards page by selecting funding webinars from the menu on the right hand side of the screen. Again, these webinars discuss the application logistics, they review FAQs, provide an overview of dates and so much more. And they, um, they are highly recommended if your agency is pursuing OVC funding, and especially for those that are new to OVC funding as well. Also on the menu below uh, where you see funding webinars is a link on how to apply for funding. And on this page, you're gonna see many different drop-down boxes with helpful information. And in summary, there are a few general steps um, if you need more information on any of these, please visit the website and select each section and um, view the drop downs to learn more. So the first is learning about OVC funding opportunities by subscribing to the news from OVC and then determining your eligibility to apply for the grant. And then referring to the solicitation, the training and application submission page on the Just Grants resource website of the Office of Victim, I'm sorry, the Office of Justice Programs Grant Application Resource Guide, which is also listed. Also, there is how to register in Grants.gov, um, which you must have an authorized organization representative, also known as a ARO, um, and Grants.gov username and password. And then next, there is developing the application and any questions about the requirements that are about a solicitation should be directed um, to the solicitation manager, which is normally listed in the solicitation. And then also there's how to fill out the SF-424, um, as well as how to apply. We also recommend attending out the Grants 101 overview using the link in the chat. As OVC is under a large umbrella of DOJ, the Office of Justice Programs, it's important to re review this information as well. And this site provides applicants with information from the life of the grant, as well as other OJP grant related requirements, which will be helpful for you to know as you become familiar with OVC and other OJP programs. The sidebar contains helpful information and guidance for developing grant submission, such as creating a budget, developing ideas for proposal, and of course, writing the proposal. Then you can also find application resources on the application resource guide, um, which is changed and updated every year. To do so, you're going to select the grant funding tab and then select 
application resources from the drop down menu. This um, one easy takeaway from today's webinar is that you can always access as much information uh, via email. We highly suggest that you subscribe to the news from OVC. And to do so, you're going to select the news and events tab on the OVC website and then select news and events from the drop down. And lastly, on this page, they have a green subscribe to receive news from OVC button. And you can opt in for specific information. And once you click that button, um, you fill out your email and your preferred topics. And some of the topics will include victims of crime, court, crime, crime prevention, juvenile justice, tribal justice, and, and so much more. And on the same page where you subscribe to update, uh, to receive updates from OVC, check out how to sign up for updates uh, for our social media as well. And you can find OVC on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, um, and also on the social media section. The section also allows you to get updates on special events and resources such as the National Crime Victims Rights Week, OVC TTAC, and other OVC partnering agencies. And so now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Jenny Stanzel. Hello. So now that we've looked at some information on funding, we want to introduce another area where OVC can help, and that's training and technical assistance. But let's begin with a poll. If you, if you, if you have an alternate, just put it in the chat. But what types of training and technical assistance is needed in your community or in your agency? Is it vicious? Just waiting for a few coming in. Got some few votes coming in. So while we're waiting, if you have any others that's not listed, um, just put it in the chat and let us know. We have some coming in, it said resources. Okay, so it looks like we have the poll that's coming in. It looks like primarily most of um, the needs is in sustainability of funding. And then we got about 33% in trauma-informed approaches um, to servicing victims of crime. And then 8% in um, vicarious trauma, as well as a few others. They're all important um, needs that should be addressed. And so let's look at how we can find these training and technical assistance opportunities and upcoming events. So from the, pay, from the program page um, on the OVC website, next slide. Uh, yeah, so from the program page on the OVC website, you'll select the link um, for training and technical assistance at the bottom of the page. And on the next slide, we'll review some of the training and technical assistance opportunities OVC provides. We'll also, if you look in the chat, we'll post some of those, um, the post a link to that um, section in that page in the chat for you. Now there's a, there's a broad range of training and technical assistance available on different topics and for different stakeholders. OVC training and technical assistance are available to victim service providers and other stakeholders at no cost. OVC's many trainings and technical assistance providers offer support on a range of topics, everything from elder fraud to abuse to housing for survivors of human trafficking. This support can include on-demand virtual training, tailored support for your organization, toolkits, and so much more. What we display on the screen is just a few examples of OVC's TTA that is available to the public. Some projects focus on supporting grantees under specific OVC programs, while others are available to interested organizations, whether they are OVC grantees or not. These projects focus on a wide range of audiences, from frontline victim service providers to law enforcement to medical personnel and much more. 
to learn more and visit our PTA page on the OBC web website. So on the training and technical assistance page, you can also access upcoming events and web page. To do so, select the events calendar link at the bottom of the page. This link, this list of events is meant to help victims and victim service providers, allied professionals, and other interesting individuals. It helps them to plan, promote, and locate events of interest to those servicing and supporting the working with victims in their community. You can add your own event or you can search for events and or other training listed. The, the link in the chat, just so you know, in the link, and they'll be posted that link for the events is going to be posted in the chat for you as well. So now let's talk about resources. Let's open up another poll. What has been the most helpful resource covered so far? Type it in the chat and let us know. I'll give you a few minutes to type it in. See that we got the events calendar, all about the grants, awards, the training, navigating through the site, funding. All of these are all great resources that our website offers. Yes, I see event calendars again. CTA, yes, thank you. Funding. Yes, I'm so glad that these resources are available for you. Now, our last area to explore is where to find these resources. Where, OB, where we can find OVC supported resources. You can explore resource in a, vari a, a variety of ways, sorry. But today we'll walk through one approach, which is as if you, if there's a particular topic of interest. And so if you were on the OVC site, select the top, the topic tab on the top right. And we'll post that in the chat as well. And on this particular page, you will have access to resources on several topics. Let's look at an example for child and youth victimization on the, on the next slide. When you click on the topic, you will see resources that are relevant to the topic. For example, OVC has recently re released a suite of specialized developmentally appropriate materials to support child and youth victims and witnesses as they navigate the criminal, criminal justice and child welfare system. These materials can be shared and used in communities. We encourage you to, to explore OVC's resources to see if, there's, if there are any tools that may support your work and what you're doing. Again, it should be posted in the chat for the link if you need any additional assistance. Again, we just want to reiterate to sign up and stay to Stay connected, sign up for updates on new funding opportunities and other OVC announcements. And as we near for the webinar, we want you to remind you to sign up. Please sign up today. You can go to any of our social media sites. We're, we're listed on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The links, again, are posted, again, for your convenience. Now, thank you very much for listening and your attention, and I'll turn this over to Claudia to close us out and to provide and see if we can check on any questions. Thanks, Jenny. I appreciate it. Um, we have had a flurry of information in the chat, um, but we also ha still have a few open questions. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start from the top. And if we could open it up to our subject matter experts to answer as you feel comfortable. The first question is, I think this go goes back to grants. Are these reimbursement grants. How does OVC handle that? Stacy, you're on mute. Thank you. You're welcome. So when you say, I think what she means by reimbursement grants is do they pay for it and then we reimburse them? And if that is what she's referencing to, then uh, Yes, typically there's drawdowns and they can draw down the funding that they need 
um, as well as through reimbursement. Great, thanks, Stacy. The second question are which is which grants can be used for technology? For example, example apps and software programs. I know somebody else is going to answer some questions. Um, <laughs> So we typically do have an advancing tech um, solicitation that comes out and that one specializes with that. However, um, when you look at the overview and the scope of work and the solicitations that come out, if the initiative that you're designing um, encompasses that and it fits into the scope of work that OVC is requiring for that project, then that can feasibly be something that's allowable. Um, but we do have an advancing tech initiative on its own. That's great. Thank you, Stacy. I'm sorry, go ahead, Jessica. And this is Jessica. Sorry, and to add to what Stacy is saying as well, um, as I referenced during my portion of the presentation, there is the DOJ grant program plan um, that you can reference that talks through and shows a summary of the upcoming um, solicitations that DOJ expects to release. Currently, right now, I just pulled it up. Um, it's down for updates, but hopefully it'll be um, updated by the beginning of the new year. So I definitely recommend, um, we'll post the, uh, the link in the chat one more time so you guys have it, but look back at that so that you all can see what specific opportunities are going to be posted during this fiscal year. Great. That's great. Thanks, Jessica. Um, I see another question that's actually being currently answered by somebody from OVC, so I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, and this is, can an agency apply for two grants that are specific to two areas geographically close to each other? For example, Alameda and Contra Costa counties in California are right next to each other. It increases the housing options since they are so challenging in the Bay Area. So the question is, can two specific areas geographically close to each other apply for two grants? This is Jessica. I'll take this one and give Stacy a break. Um, the answer is yes. Um, so you can, so solicitations are available for for most, mostly everybody is eligible for the different solicitations that OVC has to offer. Obviously, you want to check the eligibility and see if there is a geographical requirement, but generally speaking, you can. The one caveat that I will say is that you can't request the same um, services and costs under both solicitations and both applications. So, for example, within these two areas, if they are overlapping, you can't say, um, or we don't recommend that you say that you're going to be developing the same um, domestic violence shelter um, because then that would be a duplication of cost and also of services. So we do recommend when possible that these, um, that you're responding to solicitations the best that you can and that they're unique to the needs of the communities that you represent. And I also open it up to my colleagues on the phone um, if they have anything else to add to that. I, I will say that um, I think something as, as well as it, it depends off obviously as to the applications that we receive. Um, and so if there are a bunch of applications that are all over the country and they, the score is the same, say for the two that are in the same area, that OVC leadership may decide that they want to spread spread that out. But again, there's a lot of things that are taken into consideration, you know, if something like that were to happen. Thank you, Stacey, and thank you, Jessica. I think, um, as always, feel free to reach out. I believe we can go ahead and drop the point of contact for OVC questions in the chat box, but I'm going to um, keep going here. 
Um, so uh, someone asked, what is, what's an ARO? My agency is registered with grants.gov and SAMS. This is Jessica. So the ARO is the authorized representative. Um, and this is an individual that is, that has the authorization to accept an award on behalf of an organization. So as you are looking at funding opportunities and, um, and how to apply, you want to make sure that you have somebody who is designated as ARO. Sometimes it is somebody who's the CEO of a company, um, a president in, in tribal, sometimes it is um, a chairperson. So you want to have that conversation with your organization who should be represented. And that person is normally listed also in um, either SAM.gov or also grants.gov as well. And a lot of this information can also be found on how to apply for funding. And we can throw in that link here as well. And this information can also be found in the OJP application resource guide as well. And again, we'll, we'll put those links in there. And I do want to recognize that someone in the chat had said, hey, this is a lot of really great information, but all these links are coming at us so quickly. We will have these links available um, not only in the slides as, as they are given out after this session, but also um, there's going to be another mechanism where we can make sure that you have these links all accessible so you're not having to click through the chat seriously. Yes, thanks, Jessica. Um, this information and this recording will be posted on the OVC website. Um, so you will be able to go back and take a look at all this information um, as you see fit. And we also welcome you to go ahead and click through any of the websites. Sometimes it's great just to take a little bit of extra time and click through and see if there are any questions. Um, there is a question from the crowd that I think Jenny um, would like to answer. Um, Jenny, um, someone asks, what federal confidentiality laws are required for OVC discretionary awards? So you need to follow um, VOCA guidelines, which are which are under the VOCA. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say this was for Jenny? I'm so sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's okay. No, you go ahead, Jenny. I'm good. I didn't even see you come up. You're good. Yeah, I, I'm, to repeat exactly what um, was said, that, yeah, you would have to follow the VOCA guidelines or whatever the requirements under the solicitation that you're applying for. That would be a short answer. Great, thanks, Jenny. Um, there is a question generally, if there's a local office, can one schedule in-person training for reviews of trauma-centered and informed practices? And yes, um, I can tell you that OVC TTAC does provide both virtual and in-person training. And we'll drop that information in the chat, but you can also visit the OVC TTAC website. You can Google it and we come up and um, we'd be more than happy to assist victim service agencies and allied professionals in getting that free training and technical assistance. Um, there is another question here. We have a couple more minutes. Uh, Spark presentation on stalking provides everything. I don't know if that's necessarily a question of more than a informative um, sentence. So if you have more information on Spark, go ahead and put that in the chat. Let me just make sure that I am catching everything. Okay. And we also had um, some other folks letting us know that Deaf Lead has a trauma-centered training. So it looks like folks are connecting through the chat. Um, using each other as resources, which if anything comes out of this webinar, we love that, just making connections throughout the country. Um, I see somebody typing a question to um, elder abuse fraud is not covered under the grant. Jessica is typing, but I don't know if you want to take that live, Jessica. I don't want to put you on the spot here. Well, as um... As Stacey was saying, there are specific grants that focus on different topics. Um, so I'm not sure exactly um, in regards to what solicitation that we was referring to, but 
my recommendation is to always look at the solicitation criteria and to see um, what area of topic that that focus is on. And primarily OVC, yes, we do fund projects that focus on elder abuse and fraud. You just need to find the correct solicitation. Um, and again, I highly recommend, I'm gonna do another plug for the OVC, for the DOJ program plan website, as well as subscribing to OVC's um, newsletter and um, email updates, because that is where we're going to be highlighting the different solicitations that are gonna be coming out in fiscal year 23 as well as any webinars to help educate um, uh, potential applicants on what these solicitations are, what the criteria are, and what the focus area is. So if you are interested in a specific topic, definitely sign up for, um, subscribe for those updates so that you can receive that information. Uh, I would absolutely echo that. I think the OVC, um, Listserv is fantastic. Uh, I get information and I work at OVC TTAC and I still get that information. So it's a really helpful tool. And you can also cater it to what information you would like. So if you want it specifically on elder abuse, elder fraud, you can get um, you can get email alerts and blasts from that particular topic. So again, we did review that, but I highly encourage folks to sign up for the Listserv. It's really, really helpful. Um, we have another question. We have a couple more minutes. Um, does the criteria change over time with regard to what you will fund? For instance, would you ever fund an agency to purchase equipment and other items to increase outreach to additional communities, even though you cannot show a direct correlation between the purchase of the equipment and the assistance the community would receive? Even though the purchase of additional computers, for example, would make them a more efficient agency and able to work smarter and not harder. So I'm not sure who would like to take that one. Um, so when you are when you are doing your budget for an initiative, the purchase of equipment would have to directly correlate with the scope of work um, that you are applying with um, on that project. Um, it's it's. It has to be connected. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, how do we receive a copy of the contract? OVC HT 22 to 23, who is the POC I can reach out to? This is Jessica. I'm not sure exactly what the question is. Um, OBC has many different funding opportunities that is focused on human trafficking. Um, Sarah Gilmore, one of our OBC um, team members is writing a more detailed response in the chat and can provide additional information. But generally speaking, if you do have a question about a solicitation, um, once the solicitation is live, you will find information um, about the solicitation manager. And that's going to be the person that you're going to want to contact for specific questions about that solicitation. Um, sometimes it is, and I just want to clarify, sometimes it is an OVC grant manager and other times it is our resource center that fields those questions as well. But definitely if you have questions about uh, criteria of a solicitation, reach out to that contact information that's listed in the solicitation. And Jessica, that information can also be found once the solicitation is published, so to speak, on your website, that information is also on the website, correct? It is, and it's gonna be listed within um, the solicitation, typically on the first couple of page. First couple of pages, it'll say contact information, um, so like the various help desks that you can contact if you have any questions about how to submit in the grants or grants.gov, but as well as solicitation specific questions. There'll be that contact information in there. Great. Perfect. Thank you. So one uh, participant asks, can one volunteer at OVC? Great question. So Jessica, I, I'm not sure if if there are there is an opportunity for volunteers. Um, I do know that if you are looking to get 
more into um, victim services or wanting to help with um, reviewing applications, OVC, as well as the Department of Justice, is always looking for peer reviewers to review grant applications that come in throughout the grant cycle. Um, information on how to become a peer reviewer is available online, and we can also put that information in the chat. But um, a, a brief overview of what that includes is if you are wanting to be a peer reviewer, you would submit an, an application in your resume to, to OJP. And um, then if you are selected to be a peer reviewer, for a solicitation, you would um, end up reviewing a number of applications from probably eight to 10 or 12 and um, reviewing those applications based on specific criteria outlined by DOJ. And so that's a great, um, if you're looking to learn more about victim services or to be able to assist um, or to learn more about what communities are doing within different areas and a certain victimization, that's a great way to not only educate yourself, but then also lend your expertise to OVC, which we are always um, looking for. So we'll put that information on how to be a peer reviewer, and I'll, I'll turn to my colleagues as well if they want to add anything to what I've already said. No, well, Jessica, you, you actually covered it all. And our colleague Kristen just put in the chat on um, how to become a peer reviewer if you are interested. So thank you, Kristen, for doing that. Appreciate it. Great. Thanks so much, Kristen. Um, that was a great explanation. Always good to get that information for professional development as well. Um, I have another question that came in. Does OVC provide funding for mobile apps? Um, that goes again with what I said earlier about technology. Um, so keep your eyes open to see if we are doing an advancing technology solicitation this year. Um, and also, like I said, if there is an initiative that you're applying for that your project incorporates that and it, mits, it fits into the scope of work that is required um, by the solicitation, then that would be, you know, an allowable um, allowable. Thanks, Stacy. I think I got through all the Q&A um, questions. I just want to make sure. Oh, can we repeat how to get on the listserv? Let me see if I can. Yep, Claudia, I yeah. put that link in the chat where they you can You did? Subscribe. Okay, Bess, yep. thank you. So best put the information in the chat on how to describe or subscribe to the OVC listserv, which is a great resource. All right, we're about two minutes out. So we'll just go ahead and today, um, we know this was a lot of information. And again, this will be posted on the OVC website, but you should have been able to um, now get some more information on describing the role of OVC in supporting services and victims to victims of crime, locate OVC funding opportunities, identify a few TTA providers, and then obviously search for OVC resources by topic. So we're hoping that you take a little bit of time today. Um, we know everybody's super busy, but we want to make sure that we're addressing um, the needs of the field. So if you could, uh, you can use your personal cell to take a picture of this uh, QR code and go ahead and provide us with some feedback. Uh, Bess will also be dropping the direct SurveyMonkey link into the chat. Yep, there it is as well as some information on how to contact OVC, how to describe or subscribe, excuse me, to their um, listserv, and then our webinar evaluation. So we'll go ahead and hold on for a couple more minutes, but we want to thank everybody so much for being here today. We know everybody's time is pretty precious, and thank you all so very much for, for what you do for victims of crime throughout the country.
And any questions that came in after our QA session, uh, OVC will go ahead and answer them. And again, that information um, will be available. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll go ahead and disconnect.